What's up, friendly neighborhood nerds? This is Judah Rad, and I'm joined by Respawn. And today we're going to interview a very, very special guest. Uh, Stephanie Williams is a comic book historian and pop culture critic for notable publications such as Sci Fi Fangirls, Marvel, The AV Club, Nerdist, Den of Geek, and Rotten Tomatoes. Stephanie is also a comic creator with three ongoing web comics to include Parenthood, Activate, But What If, though, with a question mark, and Living Heroes. Uh, she made her Marvel debut with a short story featuring Monica Rambeau woo, in Marvel's Voices Legacy. She recently made her DC Comics debut in Wonder Woman Black and Gold number two and is co-writing the Nubia and the Amazons miniseries. Welcome to the show, Stephanie. How are you doing today? Doing well. I'm doing well. Glad to be here. How does it feel hearing that read out? is that it's still so weird um because you know like for a while like i was working like a you know regular nine to five and then like doing stuff on the side so now that that's the main thing it's really weird hearing all that red bags i'm like how to how was i doing any of that that's what i want to know like I, how so writing for the big two how did you mm -hmm. get those two gigs um so a bit of a journey i guess um I guess to kind of fast forward it, I got into podcasting and then from there started writing uh, once I kind of got comfortable with my voice and then transitioned in, well not transition, I'm still writing, um, I'm still writing like journal, I'm not journal entries, but um, you know, like deep cuts, um, writing about stuff that I was watching, but I always wanted to make comics and web comics just prevented, I mean, presented such a accessible way of doing that once you reach out into an artist and all of that but it made making comics a little bit easier so um once i ventured out and did that um launched the kickstarter living heroes and i don't know next thing i knew um marvel wasn't sending me an email to say like hey cease and desist it was like would you like to write a short story for more voice legacy and i was like oh yes thank you i'm wow. so happy on That's two so fronts one because i'm not getting sued and then two um you know finally having an opportunity to write for a character like monica rambo yeah that would have been i would have literally shit my pants i think <laughs> if that had happened to me so i get it um that leads me to my next question actually which is like if you had your pick of any character or team for marvel and dc which which ones would you want to write Ooh. um so for dc uh justice league dark or uh, if we can bring back Big Barda in the Female Furies, I'd love to like do something with them uh, as far as Marvel, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> as far as Marvel, I don't know if any teams, but I would like to do a team up between Venom and actually Miles, but Venom, Spider-Man, whatever, just give me that. Um, I would also like to write a Wonder Man and uh, Beast Ooh. duo. Um, they're my fave little friendship in comics they're just so cute that's awesome that's adorable there was a there was like a little bit of miles and venom team up in the uh yeah in the donnie the donnie yes. yeah and I, I want more of that i actually Same. really love um venom um <laughs> their kid like i really loved um there was a short mini um where it was kind of like you know venom but i'm a parent um that was pretty good uh I want to say Ram B wrote it, but I feel like I'm lying because I feel like he's just not writing Venom. But when it comes to me, I'll let you all know, but I really enjoyed this series. Like Venom as a character has just been a fave of mine for so long. Uh, him and Galactus because he has a real estate agent. I, I happen to be a, a very large Galactus fan as well. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Um, I got my little surfer. I got my surfer patch right over here. Yes. Silver yeah. Surfer, the intergalactic real estate agent to Galactus. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have to ask, uh, uh, when it comes to co-writing Nubia with Vita Ayala, um, how is it working with them? Because they're pretty awesome. Um, they are very, very awesome. Um, it's been a hell of an experience and a great one because uh, we plot out together and Vita's like, okay, so script, that's, that's all you. Um, so that's been really interesting going from uh, kind of plotting things out to uh, Vita has taken off the training wheels and um, like I've just been riding this bike like down the street with but with them safely behind somewhere near to catch me if I fall but 
it's just been a wonderful experience to kind of be able to call somebody up and bounce an idea or say, hey, this sounds really weird to me, but maybe it doesn't to you, or maybe it does sound weird and it's a good thing. So um, I really love being able to like collaborate with folks. So uh, working with Vita has just been a dream come true. Oh, I can't even imagine. That's awesome. Is it like good, scary kind of? Is it is it a little scary? Oh, it's, it's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, issue two um, from the time of this recording um, is only like a few days out. And I'm again having the same butterflies that I had when issue one was getting ready to come out. And I asked, um, you know, a couple of creators that have been or writers that have been writing for a while. And I'm like, does that ever really go away? And I'm like, well, no, not really. You just maybe have more projects on <laughs> and those yeah. butterflies get divvied up. But no, it, it stays the same. So you, you've spoken a little bit about what Nubia means to you and the POC community on your blog. Um, mm -hmm. so I, I kind of would like to dive into that a little bit further. Sure. Why is Nubia, why would you say Nubia is so important? And what do you want people to take away from her when you're writing the character? Um, I think Nubia is important uh, just because of, I don't <laughs> she's there on uh, Themyscira and the way that she uh, was introduced, it was just this other character who happened to be um, a sister of Diana's. That's interesting all in itself, um, especially given that very interesting origin story. But um, Nubia represents oh, something. Like yeah, yeah the, full, the yeah. full armor, which I don't know how you're really moving around in that the way that you need to, but <laughs> maybe it's got a polyester <laughs> blend um, to it. But, um, right on. Right on. <laughs> but she's there um, for um, people to see her and hopefully identify with her. Um, that's another way into, um, you know, someone feeling included um, in the, the broader world of DC. Um, and what I hope that people take away from um, the Nubia and Amazon series and when they think of Nubia is that they think of her um, on her own um, as a character that was, you know, kind of in limbo for a little while, but now you have an idea of who she is and why she is Queen of Themyscira. Like this isn't, um, you know some random amazon that was just picked she has um she has some meaning and she is there for a reason and she's just as important to the wonder woman family as um you know some of our faves artemis uh Violet, philip is Cass, um donna all of them um here's a fun curveball for you <laughs> do you have <laughs> any advice for budding comic creators yes i do um don't forget to have fun. And I know that sounds like real cliche and like just very warm, but yeah, like, but no, I'm, I'm serious because um, it's really easy to kind of get lost in it. Um, the wanting to I, I have uh, an opportunity with the the big two or whatever. Um, that's why I bring up Webtoons because it uh, Webtoons and just other platforms where you can share your work, um, something that you should embrace. Um, you have an opportunity to showcase uh, your story that you've been wanting to get out into the world and many eyes can see it. Um, yeah. And that's always exciting because, I mean, you just never know um, how your story might resonate with someone. So don't give up. Um, again, I know that it's just like very plain, but it's, I'm serious, like, you know, keep, keep at it. Because um, if anything, you should be enjoying uh, the, just, just the process of creating because um, it should be for you at the end of the day. Oh, nice. <laughs> that is good. Um, so like skipping ahead, like a hundred years, just kidding. Um, skipping ahead, like, uh, let's talk about the future for a second. Um, yeah. what would be your ideal future for the comic book medium? And what are some things that like in the current state that you'd like to see changed, uh, for in either the near term future or even like the next generation? Um, so next generation, I hope that, um, I don't know, like they feel freer to do what, like to, to tell whatever stories it is that they want to without fear of whether or not it's going to be popular or not. Um, also hope that, uh, I don't know when it comes, so this is a thing that continues to comes up, but um, the coloring. Um, so if we could get to a point where we can color, um, you know, black people and people of color, uh, their skin tone the same as you would a beast or a mystique or whoever is whatever shade of blue. Um, that would be nice. Um, and also for um, 
I don't know, comics to just continue on a whole to uh, grow in accessibility because um, it, I don't know, it's nice to have folks say, I wasn't really into comics, but I got into it this way. And it, and it varies uh, from webtoons, from movies to uh, actual, um, I don't know, like manga. I mean, just the ways that people get into comics, uh, video games, I would just love that to continue to grow and expand because comics are for everyone. Um, <laughs> and they are a medium where you can tell um, amazing uh, stories uh, and that shouldn't be discounted. But sometimes folks see, you know, pictures or whatever and it's just like, oh, well, the series just kind of goes down. But no, like, have you read the mini deaths of Layla Starr? It's a beautiful um, book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's a good one. Yeah. Like there there are some really life changing comic books out there, right? Mm -hmm. Like Yeah. And, and there's books. definitely there's like one for everyone. Like literally every type Absolutely. of reader or yes. person, there's a comic book for you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like Many Deaths Layla Star is one I put with like Day Tripper and I'm trying to think of other ones that are like in that same vein where mm -hmm. uh, maybe like now for like the really pivotal ones where you can pretty much show them to anyone and they'll be like that was really good even if they beforehand yeah. think i'm not into comic books or whatever it might be yeah um so i'm gonna take us all the way back to monica rambo because she's had a massive popularity boost with one division let's be honest i'm wondering would you ever write for tv if there was like a spectrum series or is comics like your calling no. like <laughs> so <can't, laughs> <you> <laughs> So comics is like a first love and a calling. So I would always love to write comics, but um, so animation is something that I've always wanted to get into. Um, adult, kids, whatever, I don't care. I would just love to write on an animated show. Um, and I'm also open to TV too, uh, especially if it is for a Monica Rambeau series. I'll take uh, it all day. Let's get it happening. Let's <laughs> right? make a hashtag. <laughs> I think my, my favorite I think my favorite Monica appearance like in like the last 20 years was a, was in, when she was on Next Wave and she was like the leader uh -huh. of Next Wave. It's so yeah. funny. <laughs> so fun. No, oh, it's like Stephanie too is um what's your what are your favorite like DCU MCU shows maybe? Ooh, that is a <laughs> So I keep going back and forth. Um WandaVision just because of uh, many reasons, but surprisingly, uh, Hawkeye recently mm. has, I, it's not because my expectations were low. I just, I don't know, like, I just didn't really bother to look into what was supposed to happen. All I knew that it was going to be related or it looked related to the Matt Fraction, um, David Aha um, Aha, um, run, but I don't know. Like, I it's been surprisingly very, very good. Um, they do have the tracksuit saying "bro." <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> and I and I love the introduction of uh, Maya Lopez because I love Echo. So um, I guess it goes Wandavision right now and Hawkeye. Surprisingly and sadly, what if it just um, it was not for me? I tried. I watched it all the way through. Um, I don't know. I just thought we would get a little bit more. It's animation, like mm. get really, really crazy. So crazy, yeah, for sure. Um, so you mentioned before in the future of comics, the coloring of people of color in comics, right? Is pretty mm -hmm. like, I'll just say piss poor. Um, <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> atrocious up until this point. I oh, can't yeah. exactly what you're saying with that. Here's another statistic that I looked up um, recently. I think it's that is from 2019 so who knows if it's fluctuated i doubt it's fluctuated a huge amount but it's just under six percent of u.s comic book writers are black or african-american people so uh, i'm one yeah you reckon that's i mean right? depending yeah. on the like but depending on the space um i would like to say that it's gone grown um but that that's nice. the other thing um so I'm learning that uh, when you're in these spaces, um, the best thing that you could do, not even writing comics, is to open the door for someone else or to reach back. Um, so yeah, like uh, since I've been at DC and folks will finally um, you know, listen to, hey, I have a suggestion. Um, yeah, I've been trying my best to like, you know, say, hey, I know this person. I think they would be great on this, um, whether, you yeah, know, so artists cool. or something like, yeah, That's yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so like hey can you just give them a look um but 
And yeah, that's the only way you kind of rectify that is to, um, I don't know. Well, and then also just, it's just opportunities. Honestly, um, there are a lot of them to go around, but sometimes it just feels like it's not that many, but that's usually because folks are just focusing on one space and one spot. Um, that's sure. why I just keep, yeah, yeah. Cause I'm like, that's why I bring up, um, you know, either like Webtoons, um, I would say Kickstarter, but unfortunately they got a lot of whatever going on. So mm. <laughs> other crowd crowdfunding, um, platforms and stuff and to kind of support the folks that you see doing work um, so that you can elevate it because with more opportunities uh, comes more visibility, hopefully more money because it takes money to make comics and that's the thing. That is oh, yeah. that is the thing. <laughs> yeah, that, you just answered my entire question which was going to be how do we amplify like yeah. minority voices within the industry and you just were like, bam, got to invite people in with you and like look at all avenues, like don't just look at the big two. Because you're right, there are so many like options to publish yourself online mm -hmm. these days. Yeah, yeah. I had another question for you, but I'm just kind of curious. What's what's on your hoodie? What's the graph? Oh, oh yeah. it's a uh, Black Widow. Um, awesome. It's, uh, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought so. so. <laughs> that um. So, so surprisingly, I really, really enjoyed that movie. Um. So good. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. And it did a lot of cleanup for her character um, and a lot of f fleshing out of her character. I have kudos. That's all I can say. So I was like, I had to get a Black Widow sweatshirt or something. So I, how great is I, Yelena on uh, Hawkeye? So good. So good. So good. <laughs> yeah. I want the Dark Avengers or whatever we're about to get. Like, I want it yes. now. <laughs> it, it, there's i think there's definitely gonna be some kind of culminating like team up of like all the disney plusers at some point so. I, I hope so i hope um, it's better than Secret defenders <laughs> you just anything would be better yeah, right. thanks sorry <laughs> sorry we, we can go back to pretending that that didn't happen let's let's do that <laughs> uh, um so uh, before before we sign out, um, are there any upcoming projects that you have uh, sort of tumbling down the pipeline that you'd like to tell us about? And do you have any secret stuff that you might just want to spill the beans on for us? I swear to you, I wish that I could. Um, I actually asked ahead of time for a thing and they were like, no, it's too soon. Um, oh. All that I can say is that more is coming from me. So that is a good thing. Um, fun stuff um serious stuff and yeah like there is a lot more i'm actually going to be writing as soon as i get off the call as soon as i finish talking to you all because oh nice uh freaking Sweet. end of the year um stuff gotta get I'll it in before eye. offices close so yeah. I'll, I'll keep an eye out for something coming from you with a character named shmuda shmad and shmi shman mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> very, well, very well known characters too. too right on. Okay. Cool. <laughs> That's nice to hear actually because one one of the things we worry about when we talk to creators, they're so generous with their time. Thank you so much for being with us today, by the way. Of course. It's like we're taking time away from you creating this no, stuff. No, no, no. Like I mean <laughs> listen, um one, I appreciate it. Um two, I I podcast it as well. So like I know how nerve wracking and it can be to like reach out and wonder one if someone will say yes and then two if they even have the time but i'm i'm always if i can make time i uh, would like to like just come on and talk to you all because that's uh, that's the fun true. part you know what's what's the fun in creating if you can only create and then then that's it just want to uh, let our audience know that stephanie was right on time like the the yeah oh yeah incredibly <laughs> punctual yeah uh, so you know, and I blame that. I blame that on Zoom, and I mean on the pandemic, on all the Zooms. I'm just like, you know what? I'm here. I'm ready. <laughs> Hell yeah, I love that. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here today. I'll, uh, ladies, gentlemen, and these. Uh, this has been I freaking love comics with the one and only Stephanie Williams. Um, we hope that you had as much fun watching it as we had talking to her today because it was amazing. Um, uh, check us out on IFL Comics for more. IFLcomics.com. That's our website. Everything's there. Uh, wash your hands, wear your mask, get your booster, like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the flip side. Peace. If you want to hear interviews from industry pros, get first looks, and have access to endless comic content, wake up. Please wake up. You're in a coma. Your mother misses you.